I'm going to start off with, and this is for everybody that had a birthday for April, and this is going to be for our May birthdays. We're going to sing happy birthday, so sing out to yourself as, you, as we sing. Happy birthday to you. course is going to be alive alive so sing out as we sing uh, this one this morning Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Glad you can join us. And uh, as we begin our service, we uh, are rejoicing that uh, he is alive. And uh, I'm going to read a passage of scripture in just a minute, but I want to share some information with you, and then we'll have some prayer time. And uh, remember that this evening I'll be back. We'll share a message at 5 p.m. here on Facebook Live, and then on Wednesday at 7. Uh, because of the continued issues with the covid virus and uh, our government has uh, told us that we would not meet again as a church in, in here uh, at least through May the 13th. Uh, we hope that the share, safer at home order uh, will be adjusted by the 15th. That's when it's supposed to run out. And so we'll just wait to see. We are doing the best we can and trying to keep up with everybody and stay connected. And I hope you're doing that as well and we pray that all are doing well in that. Um, this Saturday, we'll have another drive through offering. If you want to bring your tithes and offerings, drop them by. We'll be outside the fellowship hall from 10 to 11 Saturday morning. I encourage you to do that and help us with that. You've been great and continue to provide for ministries, and so we appreciate that. Uh, but you can do that this Saturday. Also, give through Venmo. Uh, check that out on our Facebook page or on our website. Uh, of course, the big question is when will we meet again to get back together? Well, I'm calling uh, some of our leaders and deacons together. We're going to try to meet this Tuesday evening to begin making some plans and talking through what it's going to take for us to be able to meet back together when well, our government, our uh, medical officials can tell us that everything's safe and that we can do it safely. And so I want to remind you to be praying for them, and we're going to have a prayer time. I want to remember them as we pray, our health care workers and our government officials and other leaders, our church leaders, as we talk and make these decisions. Uh, just keep us in your prayers. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, this Thursday is a special day in our nation, if you're not familiar with it. The first Thursday in May is National Day of Prayer. And so this week I'll be posting some things to be praying, some prayer guides. And so Thursdays, you have opportunity to take some time and, and set aside some time to get alone, spend some time praying for our country, uh, for uh, the salvation of the country and those that are leading it, and uh, some other things we'll be sharing with you 
uh, in different ways this week. Uh, today, as you probably saw in our announcements as they were running, that uh, would have been Graduate Recognition Sunday, and uh, we've got several graduates, and so uh, since we can't honor them uh, here today, uh, just remember to pray for them. It's kind of an odd time, for especially our high school graduates, uh, that they've cha- had to change their graduation school uh, has, you know, been done and all that kind of stuff, so they're trying to figure out what that looks like, but you be praying for them as they transition into a new uh, stage of life, and uh, we'll do a special thing as we get back together sometime before the fall and uh, honor them, and uh, of course, our birthdays, uh, I was glad Katie remembered that, and uh, a special uh, happy birthday goes out to Keith Mims. His birthday is actually today, so y'all can bug him. And call him this afternoon and uh, wish him a happy birthday. Along with our National Day of Prayer, the theme verse for that is Habakkuk 2.14, which says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And so as we pray today and through this week, I would encourage you to remember that, that his glory will fill the earth. And uh, we want that to happen. We want people to understand, to see God's glory and so you be praying a couple of specific prayer requests I've already mentioned our leaders and those that are lonely those that are sick during this time it's a a difficult time for many and we are all looking forward to getting back together and being able to see each other and and talk with each other and so it's very hard on many uh, being lonely and not being able to get out and do as we normally do. Um, I would also encourage you to pray. I got word yesterday that Tracy Bailey uh, has been battling cancer, going through treatments where they found another spot of cancer. And so they're trying to determine if it's the same cancer or uh, it's a different type or whatever and how to treat that. So you've been praying for Tracy specifically as he goes through this and his family as they are supporting him and around him. But let's go to the Lord in prayer now. And then Katie will come back and lead us as we worship together. Father God, thank you again for a beautiful Sunday morning, a day that we can come together either in our homes or uh, the few of us that are here and uh, able to worship and lead. Thank you for the ability to share this through uh, Facebook Live and other platforms. And God, I just pray for uh, all of our churches as we struggle to uh, determine what's best and what's safest as we get ready to Uh, prayerfully we pray that we would be able to open back up and and reconvene our meetings and our worship times together. And God, I just pray for guidance for uh, our national leaders, our state leaders, uh, our county leaders, as well as the church here, our our leaders here, that we make good decisions, that we do things safely and in order. And God, we just uh, look forward to the day that we would assemble again here together to worship you. God, we do lift up Tracy to you and pray that you bless him, uh, heal his body, uh, provide what he needs as far as uh, the medical facilities, the the medical uh, treatments, whatever that may be, or Lord, if it's been your will to just miraculously touch him and remove that cancer from his body, we pray that you would do that according to your will. God, we just thank you for your hand of healing, your hand of protection. We pray for those that are working with the virus patients and trying to go through and work many, many hours, difficult times. God, we just pray you protect them and provide them with the, the things they need to sustain them as they do this. And God, we do pray for those that have been affected by this virus. And God, we pray a swift end to it that we can get back to uh, some idea of normalcy in our country and in our world. God, more than anything else, Lord, we pray that you would touch lives, touch hearts. You would transform them with your love, with your gospel. Uh, with the, They would come to the knowledge of you as their personal Lord and Savior. And that they would call out to you. God, we, you are supreme. We lift you above all else. And we pray that your glory would fill the earth. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. day uh, when all of you are back and I can hear your voices singing in this church. Uh, Our next song is going to be I Sing Praises, so please sing out, sing along.
all know this one, so please sing along as we sing this one. Sunshine in my soul.
words I'm going to have to dust on that song. But anyway, we'll get those corrected. Thank you. Yeah, that's always fun when the hymnal says one thing and Marchetta's in the background. She's helping us sing. And Kathy's playing and Roddy's back there. He's got words in the system and what he pulls up may be different than the hymnal. And then I'm singing from memory and that ain't good. And <laughs> so we end up with who knows what words. But uh, God knows that we're worshiping him. And that's the bottom line. And uh, we want to do that, and we, are, as Katie said, uh, it's uh, it's odd sitting, it's sitting here worshiping and singing, and oh, there's only four or five of us, and so we're looking forward to that day when we're all back in here, and hopefully it won't be long. Uh, but as we continue, we'll just continue doing what we're doing and what we can do, and uh, I do encourage you to continue to reach out and uh, touch those, bless those that are near you, family, make sure you're taking care of the family, and neighbors and uh, whatever needs may be uh, let's be sure and be the church that God's called us to be um, today we're going to continue with our letters from prison series and uh, we're in the book of Colossians and um, today uh, we're thinking about being supreme and uh, the word supreme means highest degree or quality or the ultimate and so as we think about the word we use that uh, you know, talking about pizzas, and uh, which, by the way, may be one of the best foods God ever created, was a, a, a pizza, but a supreme pizza is even better. Uh, we talk about the supreme court and uh, the highest court in our land. Uh, we talk about, you know, in sci-fi movies, you know, the supreme being. Uh, of course, we have a different idea of who that supreme being is, and that's what we want to talk about today is the supremacy of Christ. And uh, in the book of Colossians, we know that Paul wrote this letter to the church at Colossae. Uh, he had never been there at this point, but he had gotten word of uh, some heresies that were coming into the church and uh, some wrong teaching. And so he writes this letter to help them understand who Christ is. And uh, as I mentioned last week, Ephesians dealt a lot with the body of Christ. Uh, Colossians deals a lot with who Christ is, the person of Christ. And so he's writing to correct these things. And so the section of the letter that we're going to look at, beginning in verse 15 of chapter 1, uh, talks about the preeminence or the supremacy of Christ. Uh, and this section is actually, uh, many theologians believe it was a hymn uh, that was written about Christ and has, teaches us a lot about the worship in the early church and the deep theology uh, that they would uh, have known and understood uh, through even this song we talk about music in our worship services and that's one of the great things about the christian church and and christianity we are the only religion that everybody sings um, that we have these times that we sing these great hymns and great songs of the faith and so we can glean some great theology from many of the songs that we sing and this would have been the first church the early churches uh, one of their first hymns uh, that they sang. And it basically was bo broken down into two stanzas, two verses, if you would, uh, verses 15 through 17, which talks about Christ's relationship to creation. And then the second uh, part of it is verses 18 through 20, uh, which talks about Christ's relationship to the redemption of his creation. And so let's look at those verses today verses 15 through 20, so you can follow along as I read and we talk about Christ as the supreme creator and the supreme redeemer. Verse 15 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might have or might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. 
So as we look at this and we break this down into the two stanzas, the first one, as I said, it talks about the supreme creator, that Jesus is the creator. It tells us in verse 15 that he is the image of the invisible God. And this is one of those uh, ideas that's hard for us to, to grasp. Uh, but the invisible God became visible. It was God's actual presence in the person of Christ. It's not just a representation, not just a picture. But we understand that it is that he was the image of God. It's like Adam and Jesus. Jesus bore the image of the earthly Adam, of a human being. He became flesh just like you and I. He dealt with the same things we deal with. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He got sick probably as a baby. He cried, all of those things. He's just like us physically. But he also bore the image of the heavenly father, that he was all God and all man, the best of both at all times. And so when we think about seeing Christ and, and when he was here on earth, he is that image of the invisible God. He is that picture of who God is and gives us a representation, not a representation, but actually who he is, his character, his nature, everything about him. It also tells us he's the firstborn of creation. Now some uh, heretics, and this is part of what are the the colossians were dealing with was this theology of this idea of that he was a created being and so it talks about him being the firstborn of all creation but we understand uh, the wording of the original language tells us that it's more not about being born it's about a birthright a special position adam was the firstborn he was the firstborn of the world the first man but jesus has the preeminent is preeminent within the reference to creation. He has that perfect spot, that special spot of being first in all things. Uh, jump back to John 1.1 1, 1 and remember that verse where it says that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus was there from the beginning, before time. He was the Creator. And so He has that special place and, and He's the revealer of God in His work. Uh, toward us and he is prominent over all the work of creation so that's what it means when it says he's the firstborn of creation not that he was created he was not he has all existed always has been and always will be we move on in verse 16 and, and it continues to talk about him as creator that all things were created by him he was active in creation he did it his uh, created through him tells us that it was his power his ability that created everything but it was all created for him uh, the goal of creation is to display god's glory and so in jesus christ we see all that that he created he created uh through his own power his ability but it was for him to display the glory of god and that's what jesus did the example that we can use or an analogy we can use is, is an artist, a sculptor. Um, you know, I think about the great sculptors, the great artists in history, and they would take a, a piece of stone and they would have in their mind, they would see the stone and they would be able to have a picture of what it should look like. And so they began to work and begin to chisel and construct this beautiful work of art, whatever it may be. And... They do it, they build it, because they're the only ones that see it. You know, I'll go out and I see a piece of stone. I don't see an image. I don't see it, because that's just not something I'm gifted with. But that sculptor sees that rock and sees what it can become. He begins to build and chisel away and, and all that. So he's the only one that sees it. So he's the one that has to create it. But then he's the one that receives the glory, because when everybody looks at it, they think about, look at what that sculptor has done. Look at what that artist has done and created that's what we see in jesus he's the one that knew it he's the one that saw it he created it and then he gets the glory and the honor for creating it he is the central point of all creation verse 17 tells us he's before all things he has priority in time he also has priority in purpose that he is the number one uh the most important part of all that and it tells us that he holds it all together. You know, it's not that, uh, and there are some ideas that he just, when he created, he spun the world in order and the universe and just took his hands off of it and let it go. 
But we know through this passage that he keeps it all held together. He keeps it all in order. He's the one that makes it work. And so as we begin to think about him as the supreme creator, that he is the Lord of all creation. But he is also the Lord of the new creation. Uh, As we look into the second stanza of this hymn, we see that every, and we understand that every part of creation has been touched by sin. And therefore, every part of creation will be touched by his grace. Uh, Verses 18 through 20, we begin to see that Jesus is the supreme redeemer. Not only is the supreme creator, but the supreme redeemer. Verse 18 says, he is the head of the body. He talks about, uh, you know, Paul uses that analogy of the body of Christ many times through his writings. And and it's a great picture. Uh, But Jesus is the head. We are the body. His church is the body. He is the head. And there's a unity there. And it's not complete without each other. We as a body of believers are not complete without the head, without Jesus being our leader, our our supreme uh, authority. And so we are completed with him. When we think about in everything, it says that he is the head in everything. He is the central figure in physical life. He is the central figure in spiritual life. He is the central, has the central place in creation. He also has the central place in in redemption we see in him verse 19 the fullness of god and god was pleased to let him or lead him send him uh, to take human form and therefore he was no less god it's not that a man became god but god became a man and he is fully god and he came to take human form so that we could understand his redemption his grace that he gives us it talks about in verse 19 that it says, uh, in, all, in him all fullness of God was pleased to dwell. That word dwell is in the present tense. That means it's an ongoing reality. It's not just a one time. It's not just temporary. It is ongoing that God's work is focused through Jesus Christ and he continues to work. And his work of redemption will continue until he returns. And, and judges the world but we see him as being uh that fullness of god which is once again it's hard for us to grasp that he was all man but all god at the same time verse 20 begins to talk about the work of reconciliation as i said all creation has been touched by sin uh, no nothing is isolated people talk about evil in the world and all. sin entered the world because of rebellion against God, and it has touched everything. Whether it's talking about the angels that had fallen and rebelled against God that we read about in other parts of Scripture, or if it's fallen man in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve ate of that forbidden fruit, God said, don't eat it. But Satan tempted them, and they took it, and they became sinful by rebelling against God. And then we see later in verse uh, 17 and following of Genesis chapter 3, we see the fallen world, the material world, where it talks about no longer will uh, man be able to have everything that was in the garden, but they have to work, and uh, the ground and the things we have to deal with uh, through that, that sin has touched everything. And because of that, there's a need for reconciliation. There's a need uh, for to be brought back to God. The reconciliation is being in the right relationship, and that can only be done through the grace of God. When we talk about that being reconciled and Jesus' work as the supreme uh, redeemer, um, he, becomes, he became our, our mediator. He's the one that goes between God and us to bridge that gap that was created by sin, that was created by the fall. John 14, 6, of course, we know Jesus said, I am uh, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Only through him can we go to the Father. So it has to be him that takes us. That's the only way to get to God. The only way to rebuild this relationship is through his work on the cross. And so because sin has affected every part of creation, then grace has to affect every part of creation. And because sin has messed up everything, it's messed up our lives, it's messed up the world, even, you know, I would not say... Uh, that this virus is a judgment of God, 
but I do believe it's an evidence of sin. That things are, are messed up. Things are wrong. They're not the way God originally created. And so when we see these things, we understand that these relationships must be restored. One of the things when we think about reconciliation, this concept of being joined back together and beginning in the right relationship, there are two prerequisites. One is that both parties have to be willing. And the second is there must be an occasion to bring them together. So if we want to be reconciled, let's take a human, you're at odds with somebody, your, your spouse or a friend, there has to be two things that happen to re reconcile that relationship. One is both of you have to be willing, and two, there has to be an occasion of, uh, where you can be brought together. Well, God demonstrated his willingness to restore this relationship by sending Christ. By Jesus coming and paying for sin and defeating death, he has made it, he has uh, made the occasion. So he was willing by sending Christ, and he set the occasion at, Cal at Calvary and at the resurrection. Our willingness is produced by the Holy Spirit. When God touches our lives and draws us to him, we understand that we don't just randomly come to God, that the Holy Spirit draws us. He touches our heart and convicts us of sin, and he draws us to him. And we have to be willing to do that and, and give our lives to him. And when we have that need, that we understand we need a Savior, we need to be reconciled, we need to be changed. That's when we turn to God, and that's our occasion. And so when we think about this reconciliation and what God is doing and what God has done, there are two key points of, re uh, of this restoration. That's the cross and the future. We know that Jesus came the first time and he hung on a cross and died. We just celebrated Easter a few weeks ago. We understand his work and what he did to make this happen so that we can be restored. There will come a future day that he will return. He said, I'll be back. And he said, when he does, he'll make everything right. He will, we will have a new creation. If you go over to Revelation and read there, and it, all of it will be judged, and re, he will re, recreate, make a new heaven, new earth. And so we understand that today, our question for us is, have we been reconciled to God? Have we come to that point where we've uh, come to him through the Holy Spirit's leading and ask him for forgiveness? That we've taken that time and, and given our hearts and our lives to him and accepted that gift of salvation. Are you willing? Maybe today this is your occasion. Maybe today you feel Christ pulling at your heart through the Holy Spirit and you know you need a Savior. Maybe you know you need to turn back. Maybe you've come to a point in, sometime in the past where you did ask Christ to forgive you, but you've walked away. You've turned your back. He wants to bring you back. He wants to restore that relationship. Maybe today is your occasion that you can come back to him. Maybe you can give your life to him for the first time. And you may be sitting here thinking, I'm watching this on video. How do I do this? What do I do? Well, you just need to contact us. Send us a message through Facebook. Send us an email. Call us. Whatever it takes. I would be loved. I would be honored to talk with you, to pray with you, either on the phone or, or we can meet and we can do this six feet apart. It doesn't matter. We know that God works and he may be calling you today. If he is, don't let that go. Talk to somebody. Let us know. Today may be your occasion. And I pray that if there's a need in your life, you would let us know that we could pray with you, we could help you and guide you in that. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you so much for your supreme son, who was the creator, who is the redeemer. God, we thank you for his, his work that he did that we couldn't do, that we could not get to you. We could not come to the point of knowing you, but you were willing to send your son for us. And God, we do want to lift him up that Put him in the rightful place in our lives to be able to say he is priority. He is supreme. He is preeminent. He is the number one thing in our lives. God, may that be for everybody that's hearing this. May we seek to put you above all else. That you would be given all the honor and the glory. 
for the creation and for the redemption. God, we thank you for your love. And God, I do pray for everyone that sees this, that if they have a need, if they feel that spiritual pull from your Holy Spirit, that they would come to you they have questions that they would seek out those answers that you would not let them rest god i pray that you would help us as a church as the body of christ to reach out to those around us that we would walk with you and make you the the key the the main focus of everything we do father we love you we thank you for this time thank you for your word and these rich rich letters that paul wrote so that we could know you better. Father, we love you and we praise you. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Once again, thanks for joining us. I pray that you have a great day. And don't forget that I'll be back this evening at 5. to share another uh, study or lesson with you. We'll be in the, again in the book of Hosea. And uh, just if you need anything, please let us know. We'd love to be able to reach out and partner with you. I want to close today by reading a benediction from the book of Jude, verses 24 and 25, says this. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Pray you have a great day. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you soon.